Ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm scared. I am nervous. We just hopped into draft room here, and it looks like we're going up against Sharks. It looks like we are going up against some people that are probably going to put a complete beat down on us. Now, if you don't know what this means, if you have an experience badge on Underdog Fantasy, that means you do a lot of drafts. If you have a red badge, that means you've done over 1,000 drafts on Underdog Fantasy. If you have a regular white and black badge, that means you've done over 500 drafts on Underdog Fantasy. So look at this draft room. I don't know if I've ever seen this before. This may be the toughest room I have ever been a part of. We're going to try to hold our own. And if for whatever reason you're not one of these people that have already done 500 drafts on Underdog Fantasy... Fix your life. There's nothing more fun than hopping in these real money fantasy football drafts on Underdog. Go to the link in the description. Go to the link in the comment section. Go sign up with promo code FLOCK and you will get our 2022 rankings. Our 2022 fantasy football draft guide with a $10 deposit on Underdog Fantasy with promo code FLOCK. And on top of that, you are going to get our Dynasty rankings, Dynasty rookie rankings, and a 100% deposit match. Plus, you can get into drafts with us on the channel in the live stream, which of course is a ton of fun so make sure you take advantage of that and here a very standard draft board out the gate taylor cmc cup and justin jefferson jamar chase goes at five it's going to be really hard for us to find value i'm going to say that right now you even see stefan diggs going at six I, that's what smart drafters are doing in my opinion reaching on stefan diggs taking the running back value that you have in round two Dear God, this is like the $500 draft I'm in, right? It's just complete sharks, complete crushers out here. And this is nerve wracking. But we are going to be on the clock at pick 11. I am probably going to go ahead and honestly reach on a receiver, reach on a tight end. Usually when you're looking at these expert drafts, usually when you're looking at people that are coming out here and completely crushing it, they're taking wide receivers early. The average regular drafter on underdog fantasy is going a wide receiver, a wide receiver, a wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver out the gate. And if we do not get our wide receivers early, we are going to be put in a very difficult position later on in this draft. Now, maybe I'm reading the room wrong, but in my opinion, when you see all those experience badges, it tells you, yeah, we should probably push wide receivers up our draft board. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to grab Devontae Adams, C.D. Lamb. Now with C.D. Lamb, trust me, I get it. I understand. This is a wide receiver that has never posted a wide receiver one finish before in fantasy. And we're taking him over Debo Samuel. We're taking him over the wide receiver three last year. We're taking him over Mike Evans, who the only thing he does is post top 10 wide receiver seasons at the position but here with CeeDee Lamb, he is stepping into legitimately the best situation you could ever ask for. And he's still incredibly young. Here with CeeDee Lamb, this is a wide receiver that is younger than Kenny Pickett, the top quarterback drafted in this year's NFL draft. He is younger than rookies in this draft class. He still has a ton of space to develop as a talent. And more importantly, we saw last year the Dallas Cowboys be the number one team in the NFL in points scored. Now, I understand that didn't lead to CeeDee Lamb finishing as the top 10 wide receiver, but that was because the targets were so divided across way too many players in this Dallas Cowboys offense. You had targets going to Lamb, Amari, Gallup, Cedric Wilson, Dalton Schultz, Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard. There were seven players that were heavily involved in this offense. Well, now Cedric Wilson's gone to Miami. Amari Cooper is gone to Cleveland. And Michael Gallup tore his ACL after Chris Godwin did. So what I think we are going to see happen is I think we are going to see C.D. Lamb finally get up to a 25-26% team target share. And Dallas pushes the pace of play more than any other team in the NFL. Over the past three years, according to our fantasy football draft guide, Dallas has the top pace of play, and also they're a top five team in pass to run ratio in game neutral environments. I'm expecting an elite level breakout for Lamb. I will take him over Mike Evans in a tournament structure like this where weeks 15, 16, and 17 matter so damn much. Now in your regular fantasy football league, I'm fine going Mike Evans because with Mike Evans, 
he could end up being the wide receiver one overall through the first month of the season if Chris Godwin were to miss. But here, this is what I'm talking about with wide receivers potentially getting pushed up the strap board. You have Mike Williams going at pick 24. Mike Williams pick 24 ahead of Nick Chubb. Now, let's see what the rest of these drafters decide to do. I am honestly willing to go wide receiver, wide receiver here at the 3-4 turn. I'll do it. Now, if we get Kyle Pitts making it to us, you know I got to go with my guy Kyle Pitts. However, if we are looking at receivers available to us here at the end of the third, it may be hard to pass on these guys. But A.J. Brown does indeed go at pick 28. Michael Pittman goes to pick 29. Not too interested in Michael Pittman. Josh Allen pick 30. Allen would have been a player that I would have taken if he would have fallen to pick 35. But really, Josh Allen just goes to the Stefan Diggs team. He goes to the Stefan Diggs team or usually whatever team took Jamar Chase. Okay. But let's pull this back around. Here are my top options. Kyle Pitts, DJ Moore, one and two. Now, if we don't get those guys, I'm fine going Kamara, James Conner. In this draft in particular, I probably take these receivers over, over Travis Etienne just because this draft room, and I know we can get running back value later on. Trust me, guys. I know I can get running back value later on. So James Conner goes pick 32. DJ Moore, 33. Let's see what Ace Man decides to do. He started off with Dalvin and DeAndre Swift in this draft. Maybe he decides to go Alvin Kamara. Now, of course, if you're playing in your regular 12-team league, you're never taking Kamara here. But this is an underdog draft that's a $5 buy-in that has $75,000 to first place. And maybe y'all have news on Alvin Kamara by the time this video comes out. I'm having to record it a little bit beforehand because I am currently in Alaska. But you know what? We're actually not going to take Kamara. We are going to take Hollywood Brown. This team here already had two wide I mean, two running backs and zero wide receivers. So we will let them decide for us. Are you going to give us Kamara or Jalen Waddle? I'll be fine with either. We'll have the elite level ceiling for the very end of the season in that massive playoff tournament where it really matters with Alvin Kamara. Ezekiel Elliott off the board. We'll go ahead. We'll take Alvin Kamara round four. We'll take some round four Alvin Kamara. We are setting ourselves up with the potential to go ahead and take Kyler Murray here at the very end of the fifth round as well. Most drafts, I'm taking Jalen Waddle over Hollywood Brown. I will be the first person to admit it. I haven't said this stat in a while, but let me go pull up my 2022 fantasy football draft guide. One of my favorite stats in here from Jalen Waddle is going to be comparing him historically to the other wide receivers we are seeing in his offense. We got this from Rotoviz. And real quick, if you have not gotten our 2022 fantasy football draft guide yet, fix your life. Get better at drafting. Go to the link in the description. Head over to flockfantasy.com. Purchase your 2022 fantasy football draft guide and use promo code flock before the season starts for an exclusive discount. But here, if we look at Jalen Waddles. 7.7 .7 targets per game in his 63 receiving yards per game, his rookie season. The only wide receivers in NFL history to do this as rookies, Odell Beckham Jr., Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Julio Jones, not sure if you heard of him, pretty good. AJ Green, not sure if you heard of him, pretty damn good. Mike Evans, Amari Cooper, and Jalen Waddle. That is how good Jalen Waddle is. That's why I'm usually taking Waddle over Hollywood Brown. But if I go ahead and if I pull up my ownership percentages on underdog fantasy right now, I have an embarrassing amount of Jalen Waddle. I don't have too much Hollywood. I do have to go ahead. I have to diversify somewhat because I'm investing way too much money into these drafts to just take the same exact player in every single draft. So let's see how much Waddle I have. I have 19% Jalen Waddle. And I have 5% Hollywood Brown. So let's go Hollywood, especially when we can set ourselves up with that quarterback stack a little bit later on. But Justin Herbert falls to pick 48. Interesting to see Patrick Mahomes here go at pick 40. I understand that you want to get the Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes stack. But what I will say is some other teams are actually able to get that stack. Like I have had Patrick Mahomes fall to us at the end of the fifth round on a team where we took Travis Kelsey in round one, which of course could not be more exciting. You have Lamar Jackson going to this Mark Andrews build. I am so jealous. CMC and Nick Chubb at running back. Mark Andrews and Lamar Jackson at tight end and quarterback having access 
to elite level players across both positions and having a stack at the same time with them. Deontay Johnson as your wide receiver one. Oh dear God, that is a beautiful team. I could not be more jealous of that team. But we have George Kittle, Darnell Mooney here going off the board. Brandon Cooks at pick 54. So it looks like we potentially are going to end up getting some of our targets, making it back to us at 59. If we get a DK Metcalf, if we get a Dobbins, if we get a Kyler, if we get a Jacobs. After that, I would honestly be looking at Godwin and Jalen Hurts over Amon Ross St. Brown. But there are a lot of players I think we can get excited about here. Let's just see what the rest of the board leaves us. This guy, Ace Man, has started off Dalvin, Swift, ETN, and Darren Waller. So I'd be interested to see if he's going to go with the hyper-fragile build and load up with a ton of wide receivers later on. Okay, Dr. T. Mac, this is the team that stacked up Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Kyler Murray goes before us. Kyler Murray goes to the James Conner team, so it is what it is. If I knew we weren't going to get Kyler, of course, I would go back in the time machine and I would take Jalen Waddell over Hollywood Brown, but you live and you learn. Let's see what this team does that has yet to select a wide receiver. They go running back again. They've selected four running backs with Dalvin Cook, DeAndre Swift, Travis Etienne, and David Montgomery. So we will take our second running back here in J.K. Dobbins at pick 59. I'm completely fine with the Dobbins value. I do think with how run heavy the Baltimore Ravens want to be this season, it's not the worst pick in the world. This team reaches on Russell Wilson to go ahead and to try to get that stack with Cortland Sutton. Then they take Devonta Smith. Let's calm down. This is a draft full of experts. It's a draft full of experts. I want to take our guy, Josh Jacobs, one of my most drafted players in fantasy, but I like the idea of taking Hollywood and Chris Godwin on the same team. Because if we look at this, of course, we are expecting that Hollywood Brown production to be front loaded in the season. You're expecting Hollywood Brown's best six weeks to most likely be weeks one through six because you won't have DeAndre Hopkins there. And if Hollywood can be a wide receiver one during that stretch, and we are able to overcome the lack of production we may get from Chris Godwin potentially missing the beginning portion of the season, and then we have Godwin back with his elite level ceiling at the end of the year, that's very exciting. And on top of that, we're looking at Chris Godwin as a wide receiver that we could potentially stack with Tom Brady later on, so we are going to still have access to those elite level quarterbacks that we want to take. There's a chance we can get Tom Brady and Dak Prescott here at the seven, eight turn where we just wouldn't have that as a possibility if we decided to go ahead and to take Josh Jacobs instead. But Josh Jacobs continuing to fall. This is another reason I was worried about all these experienced drafters in here, not willing to take the running backs. Uh, let's see this. Monroe St. Brown goes pick 65. I don't even know what to expect. If I am here, I'm taking Josh Jacobs every day of the week. Like I understand with Josh Jacobs, he is seen as a running back that doesn't have access to elite level weeks. He doesn't have that spike week potential, but honestly, I think it's overblown because if we go ahead and look at our 2022 fantasy football draft guide, you will see that Josh Jacobs has transformed himself from a running back that yes, he used to be a first and second down grinder that never had any usage in the receiving game to where now Josh Jacobs this past season averaged almost four and a half targets a game. Josh Jacobs had an 11 and a half percent team target share in Las Vegas. Yes, they draft Zamir White, but I think they draft Zamir White because Josh Jacobs isn't under contract next year. So they need to make sure that they have some depth at the position. So I'm fine taking Josh Jacobs here in the middle of round six. Actually, one of my most drafted players in fantasy alongside David Montgomery when David Montgomery's fallen to the five, six turn. And I know everybody's in the comment section right now going, oh, Mason, um, you don't have David Montgomery and Josh Jacobs going in rounds five and six. Hey, clowns, they, they do in every single draft on underdog fantasy. If you think you can go and take advantage of that ADP, what I will tell you is go sign up for underdog fantasy Use promo code FLOCK. Go see for yourself the fact that these guys fall here in almost every single draft. And if you think they are massive values, of course, you can go take advantage. And when you use promo code FLOCK, you're going to get our draft guide and you are going to get a 100% deposit match. So you're getting paid to get our draft guide, getting paid to test out these drafts. Okay, so Hawkinson goes out, pick 73. I would have loved getting TJ Hawkinson making it back to us, but... Still, we want to grab two elite level quarterbacks. If we could get Tom Brady and Dak Prescott, that'd be fine. Or if we get our guy, Trey Lance, making it to us, you know, I'd be excited to take Lance. I wouldn't even mind to see a couple teams here go Dak and Brady, steal them from us. And then all of a sudden, hell, maybe we can get Brandon Ayuk and Trey Lance. Lance goes 
Pig 76, crap, crap, crap. Okay, Lance going to go to the Kittle team. I understand it. I get it. You're taking a quarterback with a crap ton of upside. I'm not going to argue with you. Now, what I will say is Dak Prescott's still on the board. Dak Prescott's averaged about 300 passing yards a game over the past three seasons. So let's pull this back around. If Gibson falls, we... It's so hard for me to pass on Gibson at the 7-8 turn. Gibson has been falling here as well, and I just feel like I've been the sucker taking Antonio Gibson in these drafts. Just, it's like, I don't want to say eating your vegetables. It's gross. I know he maybe looks like a dead son running back, but you could talk yourself into the fact that Antonio Gibson would take three years to break out when he was a wide receiver in college. He started playing running back two years ago. Two years ago. You could talk yourself into the fact that maybe Antonio Gibson would take three years to break out. And if we look at the positive side of our Antonio Gibson draft profile, you're looking at Antonio Gibson as a running back that increased his carry percentage in Washington and his target share in Washington from year one to year two. But Antonio Gibson off the board pick 79 anyway, so we aren't going to have the potential to draft Antonio Gibson. Dr. T-Mac on the clock. They have Mahomes, Barkley, Kelsey. I wonder if they end up going with Miles Sanders. Let's see what Ace Man does. Ace Man is six rounds through this draft, and he has yet to take a wide receiver. Definitely going to be loading up on possibly 10 of them when he has the elite-level tight end and the elite-level quarterback. Marquez Valdez-Scantling off the board. How crazy would it be to see this team go Miles Sanders? Pass on another wide receiver here. But I am probably going to go ahead and take Tom Brady and Dak at the turn. They go Miles Sanders. You know what? If they go Miles Sanders, they have five running backs on their team. I think all of a sudden Clyde Edwards Alaire became a little bit more appealing here. Let's take Tom Brady. And before we just automatically draft Dak Prescott at pick 86, let's sit here and let's think a little bit. This team took five running backs with DeAndre Swift. Dalvin Cook, Travis Etienne, David Montgomery, and Miles Sanders. There is an outside chance that this team does not stop. There is an outside chance that this team thinks that they can go through, they could draft six running backs here and crush the rest of the field. And if this team thinks that, you could make a pretty damn strong argument that we need to draft Clyde Edwards a layer here. I'm going to roll the dice. I'm going to... Ass- I'm going to roll the dice and say that maybe they know you can't keep drafting running backs like this. Maybe they stop at five. Now, if they draft another running back, this draft board is about to get really messed up. It's all on the clock here. It's all on the clock. I think our entire draft almost comes down to this. They go Alan Lazard. Okay, good. They take a wide receiver. Oh, that would have skewed this draft board heavily. We could have also decided to go Tony Pollard and Dak Prescott there and get a pseudo double stack with Dallas, with Dak Prescott, Tony Pollard, as well as C.D. Lamb, of course. But I'm fine grabbing the two elite level quarterbacks here with Brady and Dak. Now, at this point, we're done at quarterback. What we really need to hope for is we need to hope that we have Rodgers and Carr off the board by the time we are back up on the clock. But don't know how likely that is. I mean, if I was this team here that just took Alan Lazard, I'm not drafting... Aaron Rodgers at pick 106. Whenever I see that I have Tom Brady and Dak Prescott, so you know that I'm probably done drafting quarterback, as well as this team, the stash, took Russell Wilson. So maybe they're not too interested in Aaron Rodgers. But Brandon Ayuk goes pick 90. Can someone please explain this to me in the comment section? Please explain this to me because Tony Pollard is one of my least drafted running backs. Tony Pollard going pick 88 compared to Clyde edwards at pick 92. This happens in the majority of drafts. Clyde edwards alaire has an ADP behind Tony Pollard. If I go ahead, if I pull up my ownership with these players, I currently have Tony Pollard in about 3% of drafts. I have Pollard in 3% of my drafts compared to Clyde edwards alaire at about 9%. So I'm definitely heavily going with Clyde edwards alaire there over Tony Pollard. I do grab a lot of the elite level quarterbacks here. It's harder now that Trey Lance is sneaking up. It used to be easy to take Lance at the 7-8 turn. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, I have a quarterback that can lead the NFL in rushing this season and rushing touchdowns. But obviously, he's been sneaking to the beginning of the seventh now going before Brady and Dak, not only in this league, but in a lot of these. So it's a lot harder to get him. But we have some more wide receivers off the board. We have Alave, Tony, Robert Woods, Traylon Burks, 
Jalen Burks has been consistently falling behind Chris Olave as of late. Chase Claypool goes pick 97. Good thing we decided let's not take the running back. Let's not take Clyde over to Lair. And we made the bet that we were going to have some of these players falling to us at a value a little bit later on. I love the running backs that are available at the 9-10 turn. You can look at running backs like Melvin Gordon. You can look at a running back like James Cook is someone I'm drafting a lot. Kenneth Walker may even be available. But let's see who's sitting there according to ADP. Oh, you know I'd take me some Kareem Hunt. I would take Kareem Hunt there in a heartbeat. We're really hoping that a couple of these teams decide to draft Aaron Rodgers and Derek Carr. Now, personally, like I said, we are not going to do so. And we already have Tom Brady and Dak Prescott. It is nice to see Matthew Stafford off the board here at pick 99. Hunt goes 101. I guess we could take Goddard as well if Goddard were to fall 11 picks in his ADP. I'm not taking Devin Singletary here. I think Singletary could have a high advance rate, but by the time we get to the very end of the season, I would say that James Cook is most likely outscoring Devin Singletary weeks 15, 16, 17, and that's what I'm going to care about. So you have Sky Moore going pick 102. So we're definitely going to come away with at least one running back here at the turn, potentially two running backs if Dallas got it where to go before us. But let's figure this out. I mean, Ace Man... Probably regretting taking Darren Waller earlier, considering the fact that he may be able to pair up Goddard and Jalen Hurts at a very, very reasonable price point if Goddard does fall. But scratch my CD on the clock. Are they on auto? I think they may be. They didn't auto in the second. They take Dallas Goddard. I think this team may be on auto draft because it looks like they take Ayuk way after ADP, Antonio Gibson way after ADP, and now they're going through and taking Dallas Goddard way after ADP. And they're letting the clock run down. So I think that team may be on auto. Edmonds goes pick 105. Edmonds was one of these players sitting at the top of our queue. So I think we take Kenneth Walker here. Kenneth Walker, definitely a player that's going to be falling. I understand. Penny's probably the starter there at the very beginning of the season. But if we're looking at what could potentially happen at the end of the year, you know, which in a tournament like this, weeks 15, 16, and 17, that's personally what I'm going to care about more. I think Kenneth Walker is going to be a fine selection at the 9-10 turn. And then we're going to go ahead. We're going to take another running back. I'm going to prefer Cordell Patterson or Melvin Gordon over James Cook with this build in particular. I really like reaching on James Cook in a lot of these drafts. However, when we have the potential to miss out on Alvin Kamara to start the year and at the same time, Kenneth Walker may not be the starter in Seattle at the beginning of the year. <sighs> Looks like we need running back production sooner rather than later. So you know what? Maybe that would be a strong argument for us to, even though I'm not really taking Devin Singletary at his ADP, if he falls here 11 picks, we need running back production at the beginning of the year. Even if I think Cook has the larger role at the end of the season, I'm taking Cook way more often than Singletary. Devin Singletary would probably be the right pick with this build in particular. With this running back room that has Kamara, that has Kenneth Walker, I think Devin Singletary is probably going to be our guy. And with Singletary and James Cook, they're both running backs that check the boxes we want to see. They are players that are being discounted based on the uncertainty in their backfields. They're players that are being discounted despite them each having the possibility to be the starting running back in the best offense in the NFL. The best offense in the NFL in Buffalo. So let me go ahead, just let you know how I... Promise you, I'm drafting James Cook more than Devin Singletary. I have Singletary in 5% of drafts, which is even more than I thought I was going to have. And I have James Cook in 14% of drafts. So I'm definitely way more overweight on James Cook. I even take James Cook over Devin Singletary sometimes, even though, of course, that is not a popular take according to ADP. But Rondell Moore here goes at pick 113. Let's see what they decide to do. I think they don't have a quarterback yet. Now, once you have Rodgers and Derek Carr off the board, I don't even know who they would go with that quarterback. It's interesting to see the fact that this team decided to pass on Justin Herbert in the fourth whenever they took Eckler and Keenan Allen in the first and second. I'm assuming the reason that they did this is because they had Jalen Waddle fall into them at pick 42. Very rarely you're going to see Jalen Waddle fall there. Or maybe by the time they made that second round selection with Keenan Allen, looking at this draft board, it looks like they have just been going best player available according to ADP in terms of just auto drafting the rest of this. So maybe their plan was to go Justin Herbert in round four. And then all of a sudden they had to step away from their phone, step away from their computer for whatever reason. And I will say guys, if you auto draft 
just say one out of every 20 leaks, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if you auto draft one out of every 20 leaks and you just light that entry fee on fire, you are going to have a very hard time being profitable on underdog fantasy. Even if we're live streaming and you want to get in a draft with us, please never enter a draft on underdog unless you are 100% sure you are going to be able to sit there for the rest of the draft, that you are not going to have to go on auto. Because if you go on auto one out of every 20 drafts, I'm sorry, you're probably going to be losing money on underdog this year. Unless you're a very, 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 very good drafter and you can beat the 10% rake. And then also on top of that, you lighting 5% of your entries on fire. If you can do that, more power to you. But it would seem pretty hard. Now, these teams over here at this end of the draft board are just simply not taking running backs. They're going with a very, very heavy build of just that hero RB taking Jonathan Taylor at pick one. And then after taking Jonathan Taylor at pick one, loading up on seven wide receivers, one quarterback, one tight end. They have Mike Williams, Tyree Kill, Justin Herbert, Jerry Judy, Elijah Moore, Traylon Burks, Chase Claypool, Michael Gallup. Do they take a running back here? Who are they taking? They take Ronald Jones as their second running back off the board. Rashad White goes to pick 122. This is the other team that's loaded up on wide receivers in the middle rounds after getting CMC and Nick Chubb in rounds one and three. I really like this team. This is one of my favorite teams that I've seen on underdog in quite some time. The Garrett Wilson pick was maybe a little bit thin. Like, i probably go Kareem Hunt there even though you want to grab a wide receiver. But still, that's a very strong team. Now, Frymuth off the clock. This is one of the uh, very rare teams where we are going to need to add in some tight end help. We're going to be looking for Cameron Brait a little bit later on. Rashad White would have been a running back we could have potentially drafted. We can really only draft one more running back. I think we can draft one more running back in this build when we have Alvin Kamara, J.K. Dobbins, Kenneth Walker, and Devin Singletary because we're going to have to take three tight ends. And I hope that we can get to eight wide receivers now maybe we stop at seven no i think we're probably gonna need eight the last time we took a wide receiver was chris godwin in round six jarvis landry goes 127 damian pierce 128 interesting to see damian pierce ahead of alexander madison hopefully one of these teams hopefully dr t mac here decides to take justin fields to attack of Aloha. i don't think ace man can draft another running back he has five of these guys with Dalvin Swift, ETN, Montgomery, Miles Sanders. He has one wide receiver. His one wide receiver is Alan Lazard. You'd imagine he ends up going Jamison Williams here. And we get Alexander Madison. Alexander Madison, I think, is a fine value. Like we saw Tony Pollard go, what, 50 picks before this? Something crazy. I, I couldn't imagine taking Tony Pollard in that range. So we will go ahead. We'll take Alexander Madison, pick 131. I think he is very, very close to Tony Pollard in terms of not going to be someone that's startable in weeks that, not the starter plays ahead of him, but he's a running back one whenever that player misses. I'm just sitting here and thinking if we take Gusecki. I actually really like this ADP value. Like Gusecki has fallen in these drafts. I don't want to say he's fallen a ton. It's mainly been that Cole Komet and Irv Smith Jr. are rising up draft boards so damn fast that they went from being some of my favorite draft targets to now, not too interested in Cole Komet and Irv Smith Jr. I love them when they were going rounds behind Gusecki and Frymuth. But now you have Gusecki going after all these players. Seems like over the past two to three weeks, I have found myself drafting a ton of Mike Gusecki. Let me see how much I have of him. I have 8% Gusecki. I guess that's because I wasn't really drafting him at the very beginning. How much Cole Komet and Irv Smith Jr. do I have? You have 8% Komet. I feel like I never draft Komet anymore. And yeah, I don't have much Irv Smith Jr. at all. I've stopped drafting Irv Smith Jr. a while ago, even though historically this is a player that I've loved. It's just, he has risen so much in these underdog drafts through the course of this offseason. Now, Ace Man is going to go wide receiver. He goes Devontae Parker here. Daryl Henderson, Robert Tunyon, go pick 136 and 137. Scratch my CD. This is the team that's just on auto, right? Yeah, they auto draft Justin Fields. Okay, good. Yeah, start auto drafting quarterbacks. Dear God. That would be very good for us. When we have Brady and Dak, if, say, they auto-draft the next three, four rounds, which happens all the time, you'll see quarterbacks fall in these drafts. And if a team's on auto, they'll end up with four or five starting quarterbacks by the end of it. And usually that pushes up guys like Mariota at the very end of the draft to get drafted, which will push down some value to us. So we're really hoping that this team continues to auto-draft QB, continues to push down wide receiver, 
and tight end help for us because we're probably done drafting running back. Like I said, I think we're done drafting RB. Now Lawrence goes pick 142, Joshua Palmer 143. Usually whenever we are on the clock here at the 13, 14 turn, I love grabbing these two guys. I love me some Tyrion Davis Price and Kenneth Gainwell in this range. Now, we aren't gonna have those as options for us. Instead, these are the only players that we can really be looking at from now on. Now, if I had to order these guys for this team in particular, I would probably move Robbie Anderson up here above Chark. We would move Jalen Tolbert, honestly, to the top of this list. And when we have Dak Prescott, it will be very advantageous for us to go ahead and get that double stack with Jalen Tolbert, CeeDee Lamb, and Dak, if it's something we're able to do. But it's not like Jalen Tolbert makes it back to the Dak team every single draft. He does a lot. He does a lot, but not in every single one. Okay, so two attack of Aloha off the board. That's going to be good for us. Is this team also on auto? They go Naheem Hines. Good for us as well. Just get these quarterbacks, get these running backs off. A lot of these teams in this range don't have a ton of running back help. Matt Ryan, Daniel Jones. Hell yes. Have these quarterbacks off. Hell yes. That is perfect. I think we are going to get one of those wide receivers that we wanted. Michael Carter Jr. Good, good, good. I love the Michael Carter Jr. value, to be honest. Like, If I'm going to be honest, I probably prefer him in a vacuum over some of the wide receivers here. Like he goes pick 148. If I go over to my 2022 fantasy football draft guide, of course is on flockfantasy.com. And by the way, my draft guide's not for underdog drafts. It's for your regular 12 team PPR fantasy football draft. You can use it really for any format because I have those in-depth profiles for these players, but it's not going to be for best ball. It's going to be for a regular draft. But here I have Michael Carter Jr. ranked at pick 118. I have him right in between Damian Pierce and Aaron Rodgers, who went pretty low on Aaron Rodgers in this draft guide, if we're going to be honest. Scratch my CD, auto drafts Albert O. Okay, so he has Kyle Pitts, Dallas Goddard, and Albert O on the same team. This is a team that may not stop auto drafting tight ends either. So it would be difficult for us to pass on Gerald Everett here. If they end up adding four tight ends to their team, it would be very hard for us to find any kind of value later on. But at this point, we are really wanting, this team needs, Wide receiver, they're going to go DJ Chark. The last five picks were literally horrible for us. Those last five picks, anybody that I wanted, they're all gone. Oh, that is just brutal. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Let's take Gerald Everett here. We're going to get our second tight end. I am somewhat worried about these tight ends sliding up draft boards. We're going to take Everett, and then in the 15th round, we're going to hope that we get Cameron Brait as our third tight end. And then we need one of these wide receivers making it to us. I guess there's not that big of a gap between Marvin Jones and Corey Davis compared to Alec Pierce, but no good. We're going to get one of these guys. We have no correlation with either Jacksonville or the Jets, so it doesn't really matter which one we get, and we get... Corey Davis. Oh, dear God. That just sucked. Y'all saw my cue just go one by one by one. We wanted them to take Kenneth Gainwell. We wanted them to take Thierry and Davis Price, players that I usually draft in this range when we're not already locked out of the running back room. But to see Van Jefferson, Alberto, Jalen Tolbert, Robbie Anderson, and DJ Chark all off the board by the time we get to pick 155, that is going to be just straight up brutal. Brutal. Okay. But now we have Tyler Higby, Mac Jones off the board. Good for us. I mean, really, yeah, we need one more tight end, but we're not looking for anybody else outside of Cameron Bray. And nine out of 10 times, almost 10 out of 10 times, we're going to be able to get Cameron Bray to pick 179. People really don't like Cameron Bray. Now, I'll agree. He probably got a little bit overvalued right when Rob Gronkowski retired. But at this point, four a Tom Brady build to be able to get Cameron Brait at the 15, 16 turn. Completely fine with it. This team auto drafts Tyrion Davis Price to pick 162. Good, good for us. I don't care if this auto team auto drafts running backs the rest of the way. Get these guys off the board. And we honestly may see a couple of these teams here at the turn go with a running back heavy approach. We see Gus Edwards, Kenneth Gainwell. Okay, yeah, so what I was thinking, because if you look at how many running backs these teams have drafted, specifically at the beginning of the drafts as well. Like here, this team from the 106, 
had one running back through the first five rounds. The team from the 104 had one running back through the first five rounds. Team from the 105, one running back through the first five rounds. Then you had two running backs through the first nine rounds, two running backs through the first 10 rounds, one running back through the first 10 rounds. Like these teams here at the turn went very, very wide receiver heavy early, which is what we thought was going to happen when we saw these experience badges, but it's nice to confirm that at least. Okay. David and Joku goes 166. Fine with David and Joku going. Like I said, we have one guy we have our eyes on. And then Jeffrey goes Noah Fant. So it looks like the tight end room's definitely drying up. Okay, at this point, maybe we slow down. Come on, guys. Let's let's slow down. Let's make sure we get Cameron Brait here at the end. And if we don't get Brait, here are the players that we have our eyes on. Brait out Pierce, George Pickens, then Sammy Watkins, KJ Hamler, Paris Campbell, Evan Ingram. Actually, I'd probably prefer Fuller over a couple of these guys as well. I, I'm willing to reach on Will Fuller. I'm also willing to reach a little bit on Julio. I probably, I don't take, I'm not going to take Julio over Watkins. I think even if you have Julio Jones signing with Green Bay, still probably going after Watkins. But this team takes Zach Wilson here, pick 168. Go J.D. McKissick, 169. Good for, look at this. This is what we wanted to see going into our pick at 155. This is what we wanted to see going into the 13-14 turn. You add from pick 160 to 169. Now, I know that sounds like simple math. Nine picks, it's actually 10 picks. But 10 picks here. No wide receivers. Why couldn't we have had that when Robbie Anderson, DJ Chark were on the board? Why couldn't have we had that gift? That is not the nicest thing to see. But Hayden Hurst goes. Now we are definitely on Cameron Brait watch. Actually, no, Evan Ingram is giving us a small little buffer there. Evan Ingram is ahead of Cameron Brait in ADP. So maybe we're safe. And all these teams have two tight ends as well. Keep in mind, Scratch My CD is on auto draft, so he'll take either Daryl Williams or Sammy Watkins, depending on what this team right before him does at the 1506. Why are there so many teams on auto? He goes Curtis Samuel. So we got to, this is like the longest draft I have ever been in. I feel like we've been able to build a pretty good team, so maybe these teams being on auto draft has helped us out. I mean, at top, quarterback, pretty damn good. Brady and Dak. Running back, I'd say we're all right. I mean, we have Kamara, Dobbins, Walker, Singletary, Madison. Wide receiver, we have Devontae Adams, C.D. Lamb, Hollywood Brown, Chris Godwin, Corey Davis. Tight end, we have Gusecki and Gerald Everett. So not very strong at any position, but not super weak at any position either. But let's go Brait. Adding him on to our three tight end builds here. And I know I've quote unquote, wasted so much money on Will Fuller and Julio Jones this off season. I just don't see how these guys don't sign. And if they were to sign, I don't see how they aren't profitable here where the wide receivers that are going next to are Wandale, AJ Green, Devin Duvernay, David Bell, yada, yada, yada. Now let's just go ahead, take Julio Jones, take a wide receiver that is not signed yet, but eventually will. And because this wide receiver room is pretty weak, I think we are very strong at tight end. I think we're fine at tight end when we have these three guys. But because this wide receiver room in particular is very weak, we are going to have to probably go wide receiver, wide receiver at the turn. If we're thinking about the players that we are going to be looking at, it would be nice to get James Washington with Dak Prescott. I mean, it's a very common thing to do. A ton of people are doing it. Not like we're very smart to say that. And then beyond the obvious James Washington pick, maybe like you know it'd be very nice unlikely but it'd be very nice if aj green were to fall as well we had aj green falling and maybe we can just make the bet with the combination of hollywood brown and aj green that deandre hopkins is done maybe that'd be a fine bet but i forgot this team here is going to be on auto how close is aj green i guess maybe we could live in a world where they don't auto draft aj green okay james robinson off the board i think they're going to end up auto drafting a running back which will be very good for us. I almost want them to auto-draft running backs at this point compared to quarterbacks because 
the majority of these teams are already done drafting QB anyway, so it's hard to skew the draft room. Whereas if they start auto-drafting running backs like Brian Robinson, then all of a sudden these other teams that are only sitting with four guys and one a fifth, then they're still going to have to take a running back, but they're going to have to look a little bit deeper down draft boards, and then we are potentially going to get those wide receivers making it back. But Mark Ingram goes pick 186. Austin Hooper goes 187. We're good with Hooper off the board. Like I said, we already have our three tight ends. And now this team on the clock only has one quarterback. Who is their quarterback? They go Moster. Who's their quarterback? Their one quarterback is Joe Burrow. Now, I understand you have Jamar Chase and T. Higgins at wide receiver, so you're already so pot committed to that Cincinnati Bengals offense. But dear God, I feel like I go QB there. My bad on that one. I assume that they were on auto draft just because they're taking it down to the very last second. Dear God, this is just brutal. This is legitimately the longest underdog draft I've ever been in. I'm not going to wait until the very end of the draft board. We're going to see who we get in our last two picks, and then I'm bouncing. Okay, wait, I, this is, this is a marathon. Here, this team at the 101 only has one tight end. That tight end is TJ Hawkinson, so I guess that is understandable if you want to only build around two tight ends in that scenario. Now, to take Hamler here, all of a sudden that last tight end you're going to get is someone like Trey McBride, someone like CJ Uzama. I feel like a two tight end build with that in mind is going to be a little bit less exciting. Jarek McKinnon goes at 194, and I'm a little bit salty because I will admit if I could have had KJ Hamler making it back to us past pick 200, oh dear God, I would have been so excited. We would have been so excited. But let's queue up the wide receivers that we are wanting. If they go Jared Goff and Baker Mayfield, scratch my CD is going to auto-draft A.J. Green. I think A.J. Green would be a great fit on our team. I think David Bell would be a good one as well. Like we said, we want James Washington. These are the three guys that we are wanting. I really do want A.J. Green, though, because I think that we could get that correlated bet almost just betting against, like you're shorting DeAndre Hopkins stock. And we don't have Chris Godwin potentially at the beginning of the season. We're going to need that production. So Goff, okay, we really want to make sure this team doesn't go Baker. This team has a double stack with the Buffalo Bills, triple stack with the Buffalo Bills, and they go Davis Mills instead of Baker Mayfield. So you're going to get Baker Mayfield autoed here to scratch my CD as his second quarterback with Justin Fields. And then we could potentially be looking at A.J. Green, David Bell on the way back. I think James Washington we're getting almost no matter what. Very rarely is anybody ever taking James Washington if they don't have Dak Prescott. The reason that he's even being drafted mainly is because these Dak Prescott teams, teams that are looking for some correlation at the very end of the draft. Scratch my CD. Yeah. Auto drafts, Baker Mayfield. Okay. RR Jada, 19. On the clock here. Hey. They have Kyler. And they go Watson. They have Kyler. They go Watson. They do not take AJ Green. Okay, good. And here, Dr. T-Mac, this is the team that has five running backs. This is a pretty good team. This is a good-looking roster. I mean, anytime you have Mahomes and Kelsey Stack, I'm going to be pretty excited. Ace Man, obviously, this is the team that went with five running backs early, hammered those RBs in, and then took a bunch of wide receivers late with. You know they're going receiver. They have Lazard, Crowder, Parker, Shark, Nico Collins, Sammy Watkins, Terrace Marshall. Pretty gross, but... We will see. They go Brian Edwards. We are going to get our guy that we wanted. We are going to go ahead. We are going to get AJ Green building in some correlation with Hollywood Brown. Also, potentially making up for the loss of production we could have at the very beginning of the season with no Chris Godwin. And then we will take James Washington over David Bell, even though I definitely prefer David Bell, the player. You know what? I know. I know. I get it. If. A smart person is watching this video. They're taking James Washington here. I'll tell you what a smart person would do. They would take James Washington. They would get the double stack with Dak Prescott. But maybe when we're drafting Dak here, we are making the bet that Michael Gallup's healthy or you get a Jalen Tolbert breakout. We already have the stack there with CeeDee Lamb. Let's take David Bell. I, I really like David Bell coming out of Purdue. I mean, that is a wide receiver that did check a lot of boxes, broke out early, was dominant. Let me show you all the entire draft board. But of course, thank you all so much for hanging out with us here, supporting the channel. If you have not done so already, go down there, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe. And if you want to get into our next draft with us on Underdog Fantasy, if you want to come out here and crush us, Make sure you go down to the link in the description or in the comment section. Use promo code FLOCK when you sign up for Underdog Fantasy, and they will match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to 100. 
And on top of that, you will get our 2022 rankings, our 2022 fantasy football draft guide, our dynasty rankings, and everything in between. But thank you all again. I appreciate you. I hope you have a great day and hope we get to see you with the video tomorrow.